there, Janet with Paper and Spark. I wanted to chat with you today about the fee circle on your Etsy payment screen. I've gotten a lot of questions from Etsy seller spreadsheet users who, for whatever reason, um, are worried that this fee circle is no longer accurately totaling their Etsy fees that they enter into the Etsy seller spreadsheet. Because if you have checked out the instructions for the spreadsheet, especially the updated ones that I made after they made the billing change in late 2018, I have you entering your Etsy listing and transaction fees and your shipping info and any advertising you pay through Etsy straight from this fee circle. Now let's preface this discussion with a few things. First, there have been reports that um, for some sellers, this number is not accurate. Um, I've heard that there's been glitches in the past where Etsy is not including like 10 random days in December in this total. Uh, I've seen where sometimes there are timing fees where like transactions at the end of the month aren't counted until the next month's bill or vice versa. Um, so you may be worried that this is unreliable. I'm going to walk you through how you can match it to this activity sheet here. Um, hopefully the CSV download of this activity line by line breakdown is accurate. Uh, assuming that's accurate, we're going to try and reconcile that to your fee circle so that you can figure out if you should enter these numbers directly or if you need to do a little more digging. You pull up, you go to your finances screen on Etsy and then your payment account. Um, scroll down to where you can look at your monthly statements and let's start with this year, 2019. Um, I'm going to pull up February for this example and normally I would just say enter you know, $181.66 on your Etsy seller spreadsheet for your Etsy listing and transaction fees. If you had shipping or um, promoted listings or anything like that listed here, you'd want to break those out and enter them on your postage tab or your advertising tab if you're using the seller spreadsheet. I'm showing the import add-on right here, but it's all the same. But anyway, if you're in doubt that this is accurate, you can click this CSV button right here and it's gonna download a CSV breakdown of how these fees theoretically, ideally were totaled. So this is what that CSV looks like when you first open it. What we can do now is just a quick sort and summing to see if these amounts tie to what Etsy is reporting. So you can highlight all your data. You can either click and drag over to highlight all these columns. You can just click this triangle over here to the left of A and above one, whichever one you prefer, just select all the data and then click your funnel filtery looking button here. This is what allows us to sort. That turns on sorting. If you don't see that funnel, you can go to data filter and turning that on will give you these drop down menus here for each of your descriptions. Um, click on column B's little drop down arrow next to type and we want to just sort all of these transactions, all of these types by ascending order. So this just breaks everything down so that all the same like items are side by side. So I don't care about my deposits. You can ignore that. Um, let's look at everything that is listing. And if you even want to just filter, which means only seeing listing fees or whatever you're looking at, you can do that too. So right now I can only see my listing fees. I'm gonna go in column G right here and I'm gonna highlight, click down, and drag to select all of my listing fees. So if you've got this turned on right here in the bottom of your spreadsheet software, it should automatically show you a sum. Uh, you can change it by clicking this drop down menu here. So if you don't see it, click that little arrow and turn on sum. So this is letting me know I had $15.60 of listing fees. And you can match that to what's showing up in your circle. And then it's basically rinse and repeat that process for any other kind of fee you've got showing up here. So I just have, the only other fee I have showing up here are my transaction fees. Um, so I can look again in column G, the total amount of my transaction fees for February were $166.06 and that matches here. If you have shipping or whatever else, 
you can sum those up as well. Um, and just note that the sale ones, the fees that show up in your sale column, these are your credit card processing fees. But if you've checked out any of my other videos before, you will know that those actually do not show up in your fee circle. They are already subtracted from your total sales number and embedded in this total here, which is why you never want to enter this total here as your gross sales because it's not gross, it's after your fees. But you can look at that number and verify that it's the same as what got imported when you did the copy paste of your order CSV and mine is. So this, this automatically was totaled for me on my Etsy import add-on or on your Etsy seller spreadsheet. And I'm just verifying that it ties to that. So if you're looking at your 2019 monthly CSV of fees and you happen to notice that it doesn't reconcile to the circles, I would enter what the CSV total is telling you because I'm going to assume, and that's a big assumption, that the CSV numbers are more accurate than the fee circles because I feel like the fee circles seem to have been more subject to glitches lately. I, th I am hopeful that the 2019 numbers and going forward are gonna be more reliable so that we can go back to the method of just entering them straight from the fee circles and not having to download the CSV. But if in doubt, download that CSV and reconcile it. Um, okay, so I am hopeful as of March 2nd, 2019, when I'm filming this, I'm hopeful that Etsy has got these circles figured out at this point in time for going forward. But I know a lot of us are still reconciling our 2018 books and that is when sometimes some confusing things come into play and that's specifically when I'm hearing from other users that their circles are not reliable. So if you're worried about these circles not being reliable and I can even tell with mine like there are some weird things going on with last year because they made the change to the reporting to apply retroactively to all the months even before we were on the new billing system. So it's super confusing. So I'm looking at my 2018 seller spreadsheet here and I can actually go back to my payment account and look at all of last year. And in an ideal world, this amount here would match your total that is listed for your Etsy listing transaction fees, plus anything you might have entered on your postage tab, plus anything you might have entered on the advertising tab if you've got other stuff showing up here. And if yours is a little bit off than what you've been entering in prior months, there's two things that could be going on. First, it could be timing differences. I think some of this is due to timing differences. Like I noticed when I looked at January 2019, my CSV of fees included some transactions from December 31st, 2018 in them, even though that happened last year. I think there's just some timing differences where there was a cutoff in some time zone and certain sales after a certain time got included in a different year's fee total for whatever reason. So if you're only off by a few dollars and you feel like the number is reliable, I think attributing the difference to timing differences is fine. The other thing to consider when it comes to 2018 fee circles specifically is that, like I said, Etsy is retroactively showing these fee circles as if you were on the new billing system back in January 2018, and we weren't. That change didn't happen until the very end of the year. So there's timing differences from month to month as well. And what that means is that I didn't actually pay $164.34 throughout the month of January in fees. If you remember how it used to be on Etsy, um, you'd get a bill for the prior month's activity on the first of the next month. And I believe you had anywhere from the first to the 15th of the month to pay it, right? So you'll see it looks like, yeah, I paid January's bill in February and back on the old system, I entered it when I actually paid it. So that's why my February bill looks pretty close to the January 2018 amount. Um, my February statement right here is exactly the same as what I entered in March. And my April fees 
are exactly what I entered in May. So you can see that everything is here. It's just delayed and sometimes it's a little bit different. So trying to figure out how to input these numbers for 2018 is super confusing. I get it. And if you're worried about these being reliable or if you're worried about having you know, the old billing system method of entering those fees for part of the year and the new method going forward, you can take the CSV from each month and do that same method if you want. You can sum the total fees. Just remember not to include those sale fees, those sale because those are already included here. They're imported for you, but you can take the total transaction fees and the total listing fees you can get those sums and enter them as your monthly green row if you want to, even if it means replacing what you had previously entered just so that it matches how Etsy is now reporting your fee payments if you want to. All right, I hope that that sheds a tiny bit of clarity on what has been really confusing lately. Um, if you're just doing this for 2019 and going forward, I think we're gonna be okay to look at the uh, to look at the fee circles, but go ahead and reconcile them to the CSV just to make sure if you're in doubt um, and hopefully we'll be good from there. All right, let me know if you have any questions.